Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Living HD and a very happy new year to each and every one of you. So it's been in the back of my head for a while to make a video about how to handle rejection and I was thinking maybe it shouldn't be the first video I make in 2017 because why start a new year uh, with such a heavy topic but then sort of challenged myself a little bit and decided that if we can know how to face and handle rejection um, right off the bat that maybe we're actually setting ourselves uh, for a happier year. I also want to mention that I did a project last year called Can I Ask You a Question where I investigated on the role of herpes and herpes stigma and how those affect um, sexual intentions between uh, herpes positives and herpes negatives and this video will include snippets of um, participants contributions. If you want to listen to the uh, entire podcast, you can do so by clicking in the link in the information below or in the card um, that appears next to me. So rejection is probably the uh, most daunting potential outcome of a disclosure and I can tell from the recurring questions that I get asked uh, from you guys about it, but also because, you know, no matter how far along I am in my acceptance of herpes, um, it still scares me too because it's still a potential outcome that I face every time I disclose my herpes uh, status. Some people ask me, have you ever gotten rejected because of your herpes diagnosis? And the answer is yes, of course. Um, it did happen, it probably will happen that, you know, some people don't feel comfortable getting intimate with me as a result of my uh, herpes diagnosis. And did it hurt? Fuck yeah, it hurt, but it didn't hurt more than when I got rejected because I didn't share the same religious beliefs as my um, former partner or because I was taller than a target when I was 12 already or because, you know, as a kid I wanted to play soccer with some kids in my class and they're like, no, it's only for boys. And what I'm getting at is that I didn't have to wait to catch her piece to experience rejection. I've been experiencing rejection since I was a kid and I probably will experience rejection um, for a very long time for different reasons, not just for herpes. So whether you're rejected for your ethnicity, for your religious beliefs, for your gender, for your sexual preference, for uh, personality traits of yours, for your STI, for whatever reason a person can find to reject you, rejection always hurts because it, you know, it always feels unfair, it always feels uh, imposed on you and it always feels humiliating and like I said I and most likely you didn't have to wait to catch herpes to face rejection and deal with rejection also I mean let's not hide behind our fingers here like you probably rejected people too and so did I for reasons that they probably felt were unfair and yet it happened because rejection is just part of living with a capital L, like, you know, meeting people, falling in love, uh, pursuing your passions, trying to be successful, you know, professionally, artistically, or whatever. It is a risk of that whole unpredictable wild ride that we call life, and don't let it prevent you to be a part of it. Now with herpes, we tend to take things a little more personally because uh, unlike a religious belief, it's not something that we're particularly proud or happy to carry or that we wish to use to define ourselves. Um, but, you know, whether you want it or not, herpes is part of your body and it's part of you and it is something that a potential partner will have to embrace or reject as part of deciding uh, whether they want to get intimate with you or not. So I'm going to be honest here, even though some of you will think like, gee, Lorraine, not very uplifting. Uh, but I'd rather tell it like it is than just making up some upworthy yet worthless uh, bullshit. But basically one of the things that I learned and that was able to witness from being able to talk about sexual health uh, so openly is that there is a lot of hypocrisy in how people relate to uh, sexual health. Even though over one in two American has an STI, even though over 80% of people who have an STI, including for herpes, are asymptomatic, meaning they do not know they carry um, any STI. Even though uh, for people who have been somewhat sexually active, let's say they've had like five or six different sexual partners in their lifetime, 
are unlikely to have been exposed to different STIs, including herpes. Even though the person who's rejecting you is likely not to have gotten tested in a while and probably doesn't typically ask whoever they want to hook up with if they have gotten tested recently, your honest disclosure is a reminder that no matter how much they neglected in their everyday life, there is a risk to being sexually active that is almost impossible to get away from. And that's scary as fuck. Even though most cases of transmission of herpes happen from people who don't know they have herpes rather than people who do know they have herpes, a common instinctive reaction is to feel like it is somewhat safer to engage sexually with people with whom they haven't had that conversation, therefore they don't know for a fact that they carry anything, um, rather than with people who they've had this conversation with and uh, who actually might know uh, what to do to maximize the chances of them not catching anything. It's almost as if consciously taking a risk made that risk even higher. No, dude. Consciously taking a risk rather than unconsciously taking it just makes you a little more mature and a little more responsible. So yeah, bottom line, guys, doing the right thing doesn't always do you right and it's a bitch but it's a lesson that life teaches every single one of us sooner or later um but should all else fall doing the right thing or doing things right by disclosing always makes you a respectable responsible and beautiful person and no one can take that away from you and to be honest that's not something that can be said about a lot of people so be generous with yourselves when you cherish it. If you get rejected because you haven't been uh, open about your diagnosis before engaging intimately or uh, because you haven't taken the necessary precautions or any other suboptimal behavior on your part, well, you know, learn from it. Let it be the last time and push yourself to become the person that you wish you would deal with uh, if you were in your partner's shoes. As for your rejector, everybody's got a conscience and that conscience will make them deal with their action and decision sooner or later. And by that, I don't mean to chastise people who reject other people for having uh, herpes by all means, your body, your choice, but whoever does so by reducing a person to a virus or by humiliating a person because they carry a virus does not deserve one second of attention or care. Zero. Nada. And on that note, there's something I want to show you guys. It's a comment that I've received on the latest post that I wrote about my emotional journey since diagnosis um, that made me tear up a little bit. It's a comment from a man who looked back at his experience with a herpes positive he encountered at some point in his life and he seemed to have rejected uh, by then. In addition to that comment, there's also this man whom I've had the chance to interview uh, last year as part of the Can I Ask You a Question podcast who shared a similar story. I've actually had a girl in the past that wanted to be very close to me without being rude about the words. And she said in a nice way that she had that. And at that point, I'm, I felt horrible because she was extremely respectful the way she said everything. She didn't just leave me on any way, nor lie to me, which some people would. But I was not ready. Felt that at that point, she would think of me less. Because she would think of me as judgmental. And I would make her feel less by even judging in such a sense. So if you don't fully believe me when I say that carrying this virus does not define you as a person and that getting rejected does not tarnish the beauty of your soul, I hope you will believe these men who have been in the position of rejecting people for herpes. And I hope it lets you see that whoever rejects you does not automatically think less of you. Now is rejection the only possible outcome of a disclosure? No. No, guys, of course not. I've personally had more partners who were okay with it than those who were not okay with it, and I urge you to believe me that rejection is not the default uh, answer to a disclosure. You know, I receive some notes from people who are younger, maybe 17, 18, or 19, and they fear for their sex lives, and they fear for their future happiness, and it breaks my heart because it's much more challenging to date with herpes when you're younger, um, when you're trying to date people in their early 20s because sexual education 
does such a poor job at depicting the ubiquity of STIs and at uh, teaching young people the significance or insignificance of each STI, which can make young people think that STI positive people are a minority of sexually active people, which statistically is completely wrong. But when you do and will find someone who embraces your SDI, please keep in mind that being sexually involved with you doesn't mean that they will automatically catch herpes from you. It's a risk, but it's not a certainty. Most of all, if you use protection, are on suppressive therapy, and you're vocal on the times when you're experiencing an outbreak or uh, prodromal syndromes. So to all my young viewers who do not have the chance to look back at their romantic history and remind themselves of a positive outcome of a disclosure, please trust me that it will get better. Most of all, as you get older, you will meet people who know how common this is and who will embrace your uh, status and who will learn to live with you with it and love you with it. But again, if you don't want to take my biased word for it, um, listen to these two participants that I interviewed uh, on the Can I Ask You a Question podcast. I personally have uh, been sexually involved with someone who had it and I was aware of that and um, we took precautionary measures and they were always keeping track of what where they were at with it to make sure that it you know wasn't an issue for me uh, but it never became one. And Interestingly I mean I had sex with this person for three years and I never got it um, so I think what I've learned from that experience is that um, you know, she never had any, like, obvious sore. If she did, we didn't have sex. Did that mean that I definitely would have gotten it? I don't think so, but I think perhaps it reduced the risk, potentially. Um, so I think those are the same kinds of things I would consider in the future, that just, um, you know, be aware of that, like, prodromal period, and when you start to feel like there's something coming on, um, you know, let me know about it and we can make a decision together about whether this is a good time or not. <sighs> so I don't know that I have anything here to sum up. Um, the air is heavy. <coughs> More seriously, if there's one thing that I want you to take away from this video is that um, you can only be respected for giving someone the choice to get intimate with you or not. We herpes positives feel like it's a burden for us to come forth um, with our herpes diagnosis, but many people on the receiving end would argue the real burden is to decide what to do with that information and to decide whether it's a deal breaker or not. If that's the case, if rejection is the outcome of your disclosure, don't carry on the weight of that decision. You just focus your energy on meeting new people, on not giving up on your romantic and sexual life, and just moving on like you've done so many other times with other aspects of your life. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Stay strong. Ciao.